Hello everybody, Fun Rich here with 50 favorite UK punk albums. Last week I did the US. I um, figured I might as well do a UK. After that I might do an international or everything else. Now my definition of punk is pretty wide. It's not narrow. Now I, I, I know a lot of people, they say that uh, punk was... You know, it was music that anybody could do. And they assume by that, that means that it's people that don't really know how to play their instruments. And it, it does include that. But anybody also means people that can play their instruments. Because anybody is anybody. So anyways, I'm going to jump into it. My, my US one started in 75. The UK starts in 77. And I have a lot of 77s. I think I have more 77s than anything else. And I believe this is the first UK punk album. And it's Damned. Damn, Damn, Damned, isn't that what it's called? Their debut. Kind of a goofy cover. But it's got some great songs on it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic album. Second one is Ian Dury, New Boots and Panties. This one, I hope it's not glary, it's in the shrink. This is fantastic. This is a fun album. People, I've heard people from England say that, you know, maybe American audiences, they won't get all the subtleties. I don't know if it's because my parents were both from London that I do seem to get them, get them all. But, uh. Fantastic album, man. This is a great album. He's a great individual. I believe he had polio. And I've seen some interviews with him, and he was a wonderful person, man. Another one from 77, Elvis Costello, My Aim is True. This was one of the most played records in my household back in those days. This is a fantastic album, man. No bad songs on it. Um, this has Watching the Detectives. I don't know if the English version has Watching the Detectives. It's either that or Allison, but I believe it's Watching the Detectives. But yeah, this is fantastic, man. Look at that dorky dude, man. That is great, dude. Another great one. The debut by The Stranglers. Four. Stranglers four. Radis, Radis Norvegius or whatever. I don't know. Fantastic album, man. It's got peaches. Does it have hanging on, hanging around? Just a great, very heavy uh, sound. Got the organ in there. Fantastic. We got Wire from 77. Pink Flag, their debut album. Now, I've heard people call these guys post punk. What's well, kind of hard to be a post-punk band when you're in the first wave of 77 punk bands you know what i mean so but this is a great it's got like 22 songs on it and it ends with one two x u just a fantastic another great one man the vibrators pure mania i talked about this in a i think it was the video i just did records i played recently but yeah, this is great, man. This wasn't a favorite of mine back when I bought it. In fact, I bought this probably the year after it came out in the dollar bins. I, I, I don't know. It just didn't really do anything for me. But now, man, listen to this now. I'd go, what, what was I thinking, man? This is great. And probably my favorite UK punk album of all time, probably, but definitely 77 is uh, Never Mind the Bollocks. Here's the Sex Pistols. Just one great song after another. And, uh, yeah. Holidays in the Sun. Starts it out, and it just never lets up. Another great debut from 77 is the Clash debut. This is the English version. Came out in 77. The U.S. version didn't come out until 79. And they cleaned it up a bit. You know, they put some uh, 
more polished songs on there mixed in with these. But yeah, this is a great, especially side one of this is, side one of this is perfect. Side two starts off with Career Opportunities. One of the best songs on the album, but after that it kind of goes, it dips a little. Now we're into 78, and it's Public Image, first issue. This is a fantastic album. P-I-L, P-I-L, one of my acronyms. Yeah, this is a great, um, it's got, it starts out with the theme. It, it, it's okay, and then it ends with Fodder Stomp or something like that. And they they admitted that they had run out of money for studio time, so they just did a couple of jams real quick. Another great debut from 78 is Susie and the Banshees, and what is this thing called? God dang. The Scream. Now, I didn't get this until the last 10 years or so, you know? But this is fantastic, man. Just, uh, I love Susie Sue and that whole goth direction she went. She got a little, a little too poppy for me in the later 80s, but I haven't heard a bad album by them, so. Another great debut from 69 is Sham 69, Tell Us the Truth. Now, I had a couple of their 7 inches, but I never bought this album because uh, side 1 is live and side 2 is studio. And I thought, nah, the live side might like, suck. Well, I, I bought this, I don't know, 8 years ago or so. And to my surprise, the live side is better than the studio side. Fantastic, dude. Another great debut from 78 is Generation X. And is this called First Generation or something? I don't know. I can't see. Uh, it doesn't matter, does it? 33. But yeah, this is a fantastic album. It's got a young Billy Idol right there. Great album, man. I love this. I've never heard their second album. Another one from uh, 78, and it's their third album. It's The Jam, All Mod Cons. I could have shown their debut except I don't have that one so and this is probably a better album I remember hearing a bomb on Wardorf Street on K-Rock and man that that song is great but yeah it, it's got it, it's nothing but great songs really good musicianship really good songwriting now this one came out in 1978 it's the two-way army but it had a blue cover just with some writing on it. This version with this cover came out in 79. So I, I'm putting it in with the 78s, but this is my last 78 and I'm gonna go straight into 79. So it doesn't really matter. This is Gary Newman's uh, first band. Very uh, guitar, he plays guitars and keyboards and it's very guitar heavy considering his other stuff. But yeah, this is a fantastic album, man. I, I'm a big fan of Gary Newman though. Now we're on to 79. 79 was a crucial year. And we're going to start it off with the Slits cut. Uh, their debut. I had a, a live album by them. It came out in 80. And I, I, I purged that thing. I didn't like it. I know that there's another one called the something... Attack of the Giant Slits or something. I'll probably check that out one of these days. But I dig this, man. It's got some reggae dub on it. Really sloppy punk. And it's a great mixture. A, a turning point album for 79 is Joy Division and Unknown Pleasures. Some people are going to say this isn't punk, and I'm not going to do that anymore. This is all punk. This is a fantastic... I guess it's a dark album. I don't know, man. I I mean, there are some albums that hit me dark, but most don't, you know. It's just kind of... the people that, Albums that people call dark, to me, are kind of just, like, realistic, you know? But this is a fantastic album, man. 
Unfortunately, he and Curtis committed suicide. Another big one from 79, and it's Crass. Their debut, some people call this a, an EP, but it, it's got a bunch of songs, so it's Feeding of the 5,000. I could have shown Stations of the Crass. I could have shown Penis Envy. All three of those albums are fantastic. But I'm going to go with the, the debut. Just a fantastic album. Really, Steve Ignorant, I think, is one of the best punk rock singers ever. It's got these military-type snare drums. And I really dig it. 1980. We're into 80 already. And we're going to go with Killing Joke's debut. Now, this is another one that I bought in more recent years. When I, Probably in 2014, I started buying uh, vinyl records again. And this was, you know, one I bought in the last 10 years or so. Now, I never got into this band because they had that one single, 80s, in the 80s. And I thought it was horrible. But this is really, really good. And I need to get into some of their other albums. And the street cleaners are going by right now. What a nightmare. Another uh, great album from 1980 is Bauhaus in a Flat Field. This, this is one of my favorite albums from the 1980s, period, of all genres. It's just great, man. Starting into that goth territory. Now, this band here had two albums out in 1980. It's the Cockney Rejects, Greatest Hits Volume 1 <coughs> and Greatest Hits Volume 2. I went with Volume 2. I love both of them, but this one's got Oi, Oi, Oi on it and War on the Terraces. Now, I remember when I heard War on the Terraces. I wasn't, didn't really, you know, pay attention. I don't pay attention to lyrics all that much. And I thought it was a song about Lebanon and people shooting from their uh, balconies, you know? <laughs> Little did I know. It's a soccer hooligan song. Okay, now we're into 81. And this is one that people are going to say, what? Well, come on. And it's a psychedelic first. Talk, talk, talk. Very, very good guitars on this. I really love this album. I love this band, but this is my favorite album by them. Their first album is also good, but this one is just fantastic, man. Now this is this band's second album, and it's Solid Gold by Gang of Four. Now a few years earlier they came out with Entertainment, which is probably a better album, but I don't have that album. So I'm including this one. Now this was a band that I was fortunate enough to see in the early 80s. And it was, is it Andy Gill, the guitar player? Man, he... He just blew me away. Fantastic. Now we're into 1982. And there's a lot from 82 and 83. We got the subhumans, the day the country died. Just a fantastic. We're we're venturing into that. 80 UK 82 sound. You know, the, the you had the oi from that era, you had anarcho punk. I don't know. Uh, like I said, I just lump them all in together. But this is a great album, man. One of my favorites from 82 is GBH, City Babies Attacked by Rats. This was this was one of the best bands live. They were they put on such a good show and Colin is such a great vocalist. He's one of the best punk vocalists ever. And just a fantastic album. Now another band the Exploited, and this one is uh, Troops of Tomorrow. This is their second album. Now, <coughs> I think this is better than their debut, but I did struggle with picking this one or because all of their albums are good, man. I was almost going with horror epics, but I had to go with this one, man. And, and this one also has one side that is live and one side that is studio and this is the one that has usa on it, on it alternative sid vicious was innocent 
Discharge, hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing. Just a fantastic album from 82. And uh, this started a genre, deep beat, just because of the way the guy played drums, I guess. But yeah, this is very fast. Another band that I saw a couple of times, probably around, not long after this, you know. It was fantastic. And now the dog's barking at the street sweeper. Another one from 82 is a Virgin Prunes, If I Die, I Die. This is an Irish band. Now, I'm not telling where most of these are from because I don't know, man. They got some funny names and I don't know where they are geographically, so what's the point? Um, this is a fantastic album, man. On the goth side of things, you know, one of the guys in this band He's cousins with uh, the Edge from U2. But yeah, fantastic. And another one from 82 is the Four Skins. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. This is a fantastic album. And again, this is also has a, a live side and a studio side. And this, the live side is fantastic on this. But it starts, this album starts out with Plastic Gangsters. A <clears throat> very beautiful ska song. I think we got two more from 82. We got Infrariot, still out of order. This album is just chock full of well-written songs. It's got like a, kind of like anthem type. Emergency, that was a, I believe it was a single. If it wasn't, it should have been. I believe I have it on a comp. But then the next one is You You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet. It's really fast. And then Five Minute Fashion is more of like a oi anthem song. And my last one from 82 is Cron Gen, Chronic Generation. This is another great album. And I guess Secret Records had a, a deal with this artist or something, man. You can tell it's dumb, the the artwork's done by the same guy. But yeah, this is a cool song. It starts out with lies. Then the next song is Jet Boy, Jet Girl. And it's got that... Ooh, kind of like that plastic petard or whatever that guy's single was. Okay, 83. Another great punk band. The Skeptics. Oh, the youth, or so the youth. Kind of one of them Mohawking guys, you know. Very young kids. We got Alien Sex Fiend. And this is a, what is it? Who's Been Sleeping in My Brain. Just a fantastic album. Side one of this is perfect. <coughs> I bought uh, their seven inch single, Lips Can't Go. Yeah, just, it was like a blind buy. And this album came out soon after I bought that single. Just fantastic, I love these guys. Sex Gang Children, did I say this was Sex Gang Children? This is Alien Sex Fiend. I don't know, I might have had it right. This is Sex Gang Children, another great, Kind of on the gothy side. Um, when I saw them live, probably in 83 or so, I, I, I wasn't, I mean, I had the album, but I wasn't real familiar with them. And I wasn't sure if Andy Sex Gang was a dude or a chick, you know, to be quite honest. It was a great show, though. Perkins Palace. And then I think <clears throat> the next night they played in that uh, basement. Uh, in Hollywood, some Chinese restaurant. Another great one here. Rudimentary Peni, Death Church. I like their, uh, the one that came out before this. It was a uh, EP on LP, and it was their two, their first two EPs, and they put it on one album. But since this is their first proper album, I'm, I'm going to show this one. Just fantastic artwork. Great singing 
I did, I'm a big fan of rudimentary P9. Death in June. The Guilty Have No Pride. This is one of my favorite albums from 1983. I think it's fantastic. Side One. It's kind of has some industrial type leanings, but every song on the side is completely different. Or there, there's something about it that's different than all the other songs. And just a great debut. A fun album is the Toy Dolls, Dig That Groove Baby. And uh, this band pretty much turned into a, an Olga, Olga, you know, side project. Or it, 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 it became Olga and he would get a couple of guys and tour with him, you know, or play in the studio. But yeah, this is a fun album. And I bought this because of Nelly the Elephant. They used to play that a lot on K-Rock. And my last one from 83 is Coxbar Shock Troops. This is their second album. Their first album actually came out, I'm, I'm thinking 75, before the punk explosion hit England. And it's kind of more of like a pub rock band. But in the 80s, the Oi thing went. And they were a popular band among them. And... These guys recorded another album. They, I think they're still going now. And this is fantastic. 84. We got Chaos UK, Short, Sharp, Shock. This is their second album. I like their first album, but I kind of like this one better. It's kind of... <clears throat> the guitars are kind of fuzzy, if I remember right, and it's... It's not what you would call a high definition, <laughs> but great, great album. And this cop always kind of creeped me out, man. Look at those fingernails, how long they are, you know? It kind of reminds me of Bella Lugosi or something. Now we're into 85, and we got this band's second album, Rum, Sodomy, and the Lash by the Pogues. Now, I could have picked their first, but I... I kind of prefer this one, and it, it's just got uh, a pair of brown eyes on it. That one just hits me right here. Great album, man. Produced by Elvis Costello. Now, he originally just produced uh, a pair of brown eyes and Sally McLean or whatever, the single. And I guess they hit it off so good, he agreed to do the whole album. Another one from 1985. The Sisters of Mercy, the first, the last, and always. This is their debut album. Their, I prefer the EPs that came out before this. I think I have like four or so of them. But this is still a darn good album, man. After this, I still like them, but not... This was like this and before was their peak. Another great album from uh, 85 is The English Dogs, or English Dogs, Forward Into Battle. <coughs> now, if I had to pick a favorite by this band, I would pick the first one. Mad Punks and English Dogs, I think it is. But it's an EP. So I'm going with this one. This is the, the album that came out after the first EP. I don't think it's near as good as this. This does kind of venture into a metal a little bit, but look at those guys, man. Just a fantastic album. And my metal friends, they would trip out when I would play this one. Like ones that were into Metallica and they're going, holy mackerel, these guys are fantastic. And my last one from 85 is, uh, geez, the Jesus and Mary Chain. I always call them Jesus and the Mary Chain, but it's The Jesus and Mary Chain. And Psycho Candy, their debut. Now, people refer to these guys as shoegaze. But if you see video of their first, when they, I believe they're from Scotland, when they came to England and played it, it was chaos, man. Just, just a fantastic. Like the, 
Ramones. They took 60s girl groups, Beach Boys tunes, and just amped it up with fuzz and distortion. Now, 86, talk about fuzz and distortion. We got Spaceman 3, Sound of Confusion. This is a fantastic album. I'm on the lookout for their second. I don't know if it's been reissued. This is a, an original. This is actually a second press. I think it came out maybe two years after the first press. But it has the same metric, so it's off the same stamper, so it's the same darn thing. But this is a great album, man. Now we're into the 90s. And I got two from this year, 1995. We got PJ Harvey to bring you my love. Just a fantastic album. And some people again are gonna say, that's not punk. Well, I can put this on and it annoys the heck out of my daughters. It annoys the heck out of my wife. So that's pretty punk to me, man. And we got one more from 95 and it's Argy Bargy. Drink Drugs and Football Fugs. Just great skinhead anthems, I guess you could say. You know, just, you know, just out to have a good time, you know. We're no more rambunctious than anybody else. <laughs> but yeah, this is a fantastic. Now, <clears throat> I do have holes in my punk rock collection. I mean, you can't have everything. In the 70s, what is it? Crossing the Red Sea by the adverts. But for me, the one I think is my biggest hole in my English uh, punk rock is uh, the business, Suburban Rebels. Now we're going to go into 2002. And we got the Libertines, Up the Bracket. This is a fantastic album. These guys were great, man. You had the, the two guitar players that both wrote and sang songs. And I know it's Peter Doherty and what's the other guy's name? Well, it doesn't matter. Everybody in England knows who these guys are. Now the next one is 2011, and this is Nod, Charter Lawn, Volume 1. Now this is another album, another band. They do play different styles of music. They're, most of their records are pretty loud. Guitar player is very distinctive, very... The bass... It's just a bombardment, a wall of noise. The vocals kind of blend in with the instrumentation. They do get into like a groove, kind of like that uh, German psych rock from the 70s where it gets into a groove. Just fantastic. 2019. This is a band that uh, I didn't like. I did. It didn't pop at first, and it's a uh, surgery without research. And this is cuts from the slab. This was VCLT sent to me by um, Martin Jones, and it's very. I just thought it was generic punk. But the more I listen to this, the more I just really love it, man. It's a fantastic album. Now this next one is 2020. And it's Chubby and the Gang, Speed Kills. Their debut album. Now I know, I think the drummer of this band, he was a vocalist in another band that I have. But I believe they only came out with an EP. This is their debut I bought their second one, and I didn't like it as much, and I ended up purging it, you know. But this is banger, killer stuff, fun, fun punk. And last but not least is Sour Sob. This came out in 2021. This is very bass heavy, and the guitars come in, but the bass is very heavy. It's an all-female band. And they're really cool, man. 
the the song Shoe Gaze is uh is is pretty funny. It's the girls talking about how come you don't look at me as much as you do your foot pedals on your guitar, you know? But yeah, fantastic. And that's my number fifty. Sour Sob. This is brought to you by Going Underground Records. Welcome to Bakersfield. Now leave. Take care, everybody. I got an itchy bum.